Hello, and today we're going to have a look at the Euphonics MC Control. Um, you'll see it starting up there. When um, it's complete, we should see it appearing in the EU Control software on the top there. Now, I pre-installed all the software from um, Euphonics website, or Avid website, I think it was. Still all freely available. Um, seemed to go fairly straightforward, straightforwardly, so um, it's still very much um, a current usable uh, control surface. And I have to say, um, I'm extremely impressed by some of the things I've seen, and I'll try and show you some of them today. Um, first thing we need to do is, um, what it will give us is when we install the uh, software and set it up correctly, it gives us, similar to the UF8, it gives us some uh, ports um, options um, out of the box. So four port options, um, for want of a better term, um, means that we can go up to four devices, 32 tracks, I guess, is, um, would be maximum using the Euphonics MC Mix, which I, I did look at um, ooh, a couple of months back, I think. Anyway, um, I can't, do you know, I can't talk and do things at the same time. Um, it's one of those things that women can do uh, and blokes aren't very good at. So bear with me. Uh, I wanted to show you how, how this is set up. It's exactly the same as every other control surface. I'm giving it port one um, and on the equivalent output ports that also needs to match. Um, doesn't really matter what number it is provided that they match. Um, so we should now be in business and if I bring up um, the mixer and put it somewhere where you can close this down actually we don't need and I'll leave that in the background actually I'll go into there in a minute um, let's put the mixer there so you can see what's going on um, we've got all the basics so we've got four faders on the MC control um, that sounds quite limiting but you have so much opportunity with banking and uh, going around and having the screen um, which shows you a lot more than the four options um, you can select um, further up just by clicking on the relevant um, item on the screen um, but before we go too much further let me just carry on showing you the basics you've got selection here of tracks and the reason there are two um, you can see it's been mirrored by two is because I was messing around earlier on there are two options on the um, the software uh, which I must admit I don't fully understand um, had I not clicked uh, on the screen um, I think we probably would have just been seeing the one double coloured one as, um, as in the top there anyway don't let that worry you <laughs> you can also um, record enable tracks you can see them been enabled in uh, the mixer in FL Studio and of course in the screen here little red dots uh, we can solo tracks we can mute tracks and let's attempt to leave everything as we wish to find it with all the tracks um, open for recording uh, you've got the usual transport controls down here, so you can play, stop, fast forward, and you're going to see that better actually if I bring up the playlist, um, fast forward, rewind, play, and you can go into record mode as well. Um, you'll see I'm starting to make use of these buttons on the bottom. These are um, soft keys, similar to the ones that the UF8 has but perhaps a little better because instead of just being limited to um, a bit of text, uh, black and white text and no icons, you can see here and actually before I go too much further, I say you can see here, you probably can't see because it comes out appallingly on this video so I'm just going to drag in um, a screenshot so you can see what this screen actually looks like to me um, I do apologise, it's not videoing very well. Let's put that somewhere where you can see it. Um, it's possibly not taking up the whole screen. Now, um, that gives a much better idea of what the screen looks like um, in real life. That 
results from um, a review from SOS of the Euphonic 70 control. And you can see how old it is. That's January 2009. If you're in the market for one of these, don't let the age put you off because uh, it really is, um, I was going to say quite spectacular. It's amazing considering um, its age, just what it can do um, even today running on Windows 10. Um, it's also Mac compatible. It started off uh, just as only being Mac compatible back in the day. And I think that's reflected in the review here. Uh, but nowadays, um, an awful lot of work has been done over the last, what, 20, 10 years, 10, 11, 12 years, whatever it is. Um, loads of firmware updates, loads of work on the software, both on the, um, uh, the Mac side and obviously on the original um, uh, interface for uh, Pro Tools and Logic and so on. Um, anyway, let me just take that off so I can try not to distract myself too much as to what I'm trying to show you. So we've looked at this side, we've looked at the transport controls, we've started to look at the screen. Um, I've shown you um, that you can select tracks beyond the four that you have faders for here. You can also bank up tracks and you can see them appearing below um, or one at a time. That's called nudging in this case. Let's leave it on kick, which is the first track. These pages relate to the control of these knobs. Now, I haven't had time to get to grips with this, but what you can see perhaps, or possibly you can't, depending on how good your eyesight is, is the descriptions for the knobs changing as I change the pages. So my interpretation of that is loads of potential um, for scripting in FL Studio. Um, I can't say for definite that you'd have complete control over these, but I wouldn't be surprised if you can hang, you have, given how open um, I've seen that they've made everything uh, on this control so far. Um, you've got a back button here. Let's just press it. It's not taking us back because we haven't been anywhere. Application button um, relates to the fact that um, this control, you can see I've got FL Studio shortcuts here, which I've set up, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Now, I'm running FL Studio, so it knows I'm interested in FL Studio. If I'm running a different bit of software, and earlier on I showed you um, Edge, and I've used that as my test bed. So let's bring that back, and you'll see the shortcuts change there. And let me just bring Edge back on the screen. It's currently over here. So these shortcuts I set up earlier just to show you um, how this process works. Now I can jump through the tabs within um, Edge there, and you can see I was looking at shortcuts for Edge, which is um, what I used to crib um, to set these to set these up. Um, I can zoom in, I can zoom out, um, I can add a tab, I can remove a tab, and I can close the whole thing down. Now, Edge has got hundreds of shortcuts, so loads of potential, and you're not limited to. I think it's ten. You can see here. You've got soft key, a whole soft key screen here, and you've got additional options with these buttons here, which gives you more more soft keys. Then you can shake it to the cap. Um, I haven't got them set up, which is why they will appear in black. But loads of potential. Um, quite impressed with how much they've done, and I think now that I've shown you the basics, um, and it does do a lot more than I've shown you in terms of raw functionality for. Um, your workflow in FL Studio. Uh, I'll just show you how to set up one of these buttons. Now when I looked at this before, uh, I've obviously set up these nine. There's a blank space here. So let's use that and let's set up something new. So if we're going to soft keys, and um, one of the benefits here is you can see now probably what I'm seeing on the screen. Now for some reason the colours um, I'm getting. I'm, I'm videoing this. It's the, my camera is a an old uh, Apple iPhone, um, and it's not the best for getting the colours correct. Those colours are totally wrong, and I've done my best. I've actually reduced the uh, screen brightness down to the bare minimum, um, just so you can see something. 
Um, I'm just going to demonstrate that quickly. You've got control of the screen brightness here. So if I turn that up, it actually looks great to me. Very bright. And now it looks pretty much like that earlier screenshot. But I know to you, um, you can't see a thing. So I've taken it back down. So at least you can maybe be able to read a little bit. And you just have to take my word for it that it um, looks pretty good in, in uh, real life. As good as you can see here or indeed in the screenshot um, from the uh, Edge review from SOS that I showed you earlier. So let's um, create our shortcut or soft key. Um, I happen to know uh, that um, if we go in here, similar to um, the UF8s, I can either go in and I can create any number of keys um, and type them in or I can just type them in with a keyboard whenever I want any shortcut um, I can go in something called surface which is I think relates to this control has a lot of features relating to um, monitoring of sound um, and so on and those are reflected in, in here in the kind of things you can do I think a lot of flexibility, especially if you um, have multiple um, Ucom devices. Um, I've only got the two. I've got this and the MC Mix, which I did a review of earlier. But loads of potential. But um, let's delete that. Um, page. This is also an internal option. Um, when we looked at the U control earlier on, you can set defaults for some of these items or you can set them on an application basis, which is what I would be doing here. Um, the wheel relates to what you can do with the, what I call the job dial, this big knob down here. You can make it do whatever you want by default by selecting um, the options here. Um, but that's not what we're doing today. Let's delete that. The one we're interested in, excuse me, is um, Yukon. Now, um, Yukon is the protocol that this system uses, I believe, um, to communicate with um, Pro Tools, I think, and possibly some other systems. Um, and it was launched, I think, with only Yukon support. Since then, it's also got Mackie support. And I was really pleased when I saw um, this menu option, which shows you all the different options, which are standard Mackie uh, options that you can link to any of these um, shortcuts. Now the benefit of this over um, using um, keyboard shortcuts is these are always going to work even if you don't have um, the application highlighted in Windows. Um, I'm not sure on a Mac um, if it's a similar kind of scenario but basically um, seeing these here this is something I haven't seen anywhere else on any other control surface, including the UF8. Um, I hope that SSL uh, will improve on their um, Mackie support and perhaps do something that's more specific for FL Studio. Um, I'm perhaps being a little bit uh, unfair to them because they do have this kind of support for the supported doors but it's quite not quite as open as this. Um, what I like is I can go in, global Mackie tools, um, function keys. I'm going to pick out function 16, select that, give it a name. And I'm going to call it colors. Now, if anyone watched my video yesterday, um, I did demonstrate this on a different control surface. Um, it's just a function I'd written allows you to have default colors on your mixer probably better to show you than it is to, um, to to tell you about it so we've now got the color colors button appearing here and um, if I start clicking it you can see I'd, I'd already left it on the, one of the ones which I've chosen from here I get some options which I can go through and choose now these options will um, persist with your FL studio session as if you'd selected them yourself by going in and perhaps doing change colour.
anyway that's by the by um, what I really wanted to show you was the flexibility um, that you have um, with these soft keys one thing I like as well is these buttons relate on a one-to-one -one, um, basis to the the um, function keys shown here or the soft keys shown here so I can either do this on the touch screen change colors or I can press the button so anyone who likes the tactile feedback and I know that's most of us um, gets rewarded um, now I've shown I've shown these before basically um, it's the menu on FL Studio that's the mixer playlist these are just shortcuts soft keys that I've set up um, piano roll um, and I can also if I bring up the playlist I think I've can jump between the markers that have been set up forwards and backwards um, I don't remember marker select and marker release I don't remember what they were uh, add and remove markers if I perhaps play a little bit of the song and pause it there and let's say that's a point where I wanted a, a marker I can add a chromatic marker there um, do it again and delete it um, with the same button um, oh browse I don't think I showed that's probably hiding behind the playlist yeah, there it is um, I'm actually using that demo song there um, as the background music um, but I don't think I'll play too much so you probably don't know that that's from Nine Loops Keep It Simple from way back in 2015 um, okay let's look at a few of these other options now this is not something I have set up but if we go into surround as the menu option is called one of the options on here is um, control um, over 360 degrees or you know, rather 180 degrees I guess of multiple speakers so I'm looking there at one two three four five speakers um, and it's possible to have control using uh, the jog dial of the positioning of elements in the, in the sound now that is not something I've even tried to set up in FL Studio I don't think FL Studio supports surround sound like that but it's um, testament to how advanced this controller was. Um, there's also setup options. I don't know why I clicked that one. Um, which relate to this being a professional setup within a, um, a recording studio. So you've got talk back and various other monitor options which you can select. So if I had four sets of monitors and I haven't, I've got two, you can set it up and select which monitors you want to listen to um, with these things so loads of potential as I say um, what have I missed let's go back to track layout um, one option which I might look at if I get time is some remapping of some of these buttons um, using scripting which is something I did uh, it's similar to what I've done actually with the, the colors button but it, there are two options there you can either do it using um, as I showed you selecting the Mackey option or you can do it in the Motion script within FL Studio um, okay that's probably a good time for me to go because I've got to answer the front door, Someone is at the front door. thanks very much for your time